cue points definitely made my life as a DJ a little bit easier, but do you have to set cue points for all your tracks? Let's talk about that right now. This is Share the Knowledge. This is the Share the Knowledge podcast for DJs. All right, so I have a question right here about cue points, and I've done videos about cue points before. This is a video request. I might do a new video as well, but I wanted to talk about this for a second. Now, the question is, I'm a bedroom DJ, and I'm studying the craft more and more. Can you do a video on marking cue points and setting out points on a track? I'm realizing most of the work in DJing is done before the set. With so many tracks, who has time to mark all the cue points? All right, that's what I wanted to talk about because that is important. So first of all, if you're watching this or listening to the podcast and you're not familiar with cue points, a cue point is basically a marker in a track that allows you to go straight to that point. So cue points give you easy access to any point in the song. That's a lot easier than when we were using vinyl and you would have to like spin forward to find it, spin back to go back to a point, a previous point. A cue point will allow you to do that automatically. You can trigger that cue point either within DJ software or on CDJs on a button. But in order to use cue points, first you have to set them because they're not in your songs yet. So you have to decide if you want to have markers in that track that will allow you to go straight to that point. Now, for me personally, I use cue points. A lot of times I'll have a cue point at the first beat. That's a part I want to get back to easily. A lot of times I might be playing or queuing it up, and instead of bringing it back, I can just hit that cue point and be back at the beginning. A lot of times I'll have one at the beginning of a verse because I like the backspin, that first sentence, stuff like that. And maybe I'll have some cue points either further in the track, like a breakdown or something like that. And with other tracks, I might just have cue points on single drum sound. So one on the kick, one on the high, one on the snare. So I can do some finger drumming on the pads. That's my preferred method of using cue points. I know a lot of DJs also use cue points as a marker for their transition in and out points to have like that visual indicator to show them like, okay, my cue point is coming up. This is where I have to start my transition. That works. I don't use it, but I understand that that definitely works. Now, in this case, you're wondering how much time it's going to take to mark all of your cue points. It's going to take a lot of time. You don't have to mark all your tracks with cue points. That's where you begin. You do not play all of the music in your music collection. So if we're talking about preparation, if you want to set cue points in advance, which is a good thing, you can do that with the tracks that you will most likely play. If you're still a bedroom DJ right now, you're practicing at home. Whenever you practice and you load in a new track that you haven't put cue points in yet, you put the cue points in right then when you're playing it. That way, after a while, a lot of your tracks will have the cue points in there. Now, if you're already doing gigs and you're downloading a lot of new music every week, you don't have to put cue points in all of those tracks. Now, for me, like I have to go back to that point, you're realizing most of the work in DJing is done before the set. For me personally, that is not the case since I'm playing freestyle, so I do not prepare my set. I do make sure that I have an idea of what I'm bringing, so that definitely counts as preparation, but since I'm DJing digitally, those crates are already in my laptop. I might just take a look and maybe make a special crate for an evening and fill it with tracks, but a lot of times I don't even do that. And it happens a bunch of times that I'm playing and I'm loading in a track and I took it from a different folder and that version does not have the cue points yet. It takes me a couple of seconds to set, of course, that cue point at the beginning. That's easy. So the first time I load the track, go to the beginning, set that cue point, move it forward or just beat match it. Once I'm beat matching, cueing it, I'll get to that point where the verse begins, set a cue point there. I can work that way. But the preferred method is to make sure that at least most of the tracks that you play most often have the cue points in there. But if you're at home right now, that's no issue. But you do not have to do everything. Just please keep that in mind because I get this question more often, like people telling me like, yeah, I've been uh, busy the last couple of weeks putting cue points in all my music. I'm like, why would you do that? Most likely, I have a collection of music. Some of these tracks in here never get played. I still have to take those out. But why would you spend time on something when you don't even know if you would play that track? So um, there's no need to do that. Now, I'll think about making a new cue point video to explain it again. But if you go to DJ TLM TV, uh, go to the channel page, you go to the search box right there and you hit cue points, you type cue points, you will get 
the videos that I made about cue points. I have a video how to make cue points. I even have a video that shows you how you can make a cue point with stickers using real vinyl. So I have some material about that on the channel already. So I hope that helps you out. Have fun practicing and while you're practicing, set those cue points. You just checked out a video clip from the Share the Knowledge podcast for DJs. If you want to check out the full audio episode, you can check it on Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, iTunes, you name it. The links are in the description box down below. If you want to ask questions for a future episode, you can do that in the comments section or check me out on Instagram. You could also go to the Share the Knowledge Facebook page and check me out anywhere on social. The handle is DJTLM. Everywhere, uh, check out DJTLM.com for all my info and make sure you subscribe to DJTLM TV and activate the notifications so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks for tuning in.